Look at that. You shall not pass. <laughs> they can do so much damage. So I you just... really have to protect your home and your RV from those types of things. That's a lot lighter than a 15 inch cord. You like the texture of it? Tastes just like That's the movie. Awesome. There's nothing obvious out. Oh God. Oh. <laughs> you are the magic. You guys are the magic. I'll show you the magic. There it is. All right, so we've landed in St. Augustine. Uh, Jess is just finishing up vacuuming. We're setting this thing up to take it away. So I'll explain that. Hold on. Hold on. So we are prepping the RV to put in storage for just a couple weeks. We'll get to that in a second. We wanna, we wanna wrap up our thoughts on Disney, so. Oh my goodness. If you like fireworks, definitely put that on your bucket list of fireworks shows to see. It needs to be done, and it's not just the fireworks, which I, I had heard that they do a light show, but I really wasn't like understanding what the light show entailed, and it's pretty phenomenal, especially if you've grown up with Disney as a kid. They bring in all the characters from old movies, and it's just very well done. See how the phone's up? Yeah. Make a wish upon a star. The millions of people that are around you, that's not really the best part. <laughs> For uh, us, it, that's not our but favorite, it, but it actually but it was adds fun. to the experience because everybody there is so excited. Um, so you can kind of feed off that. It's like going to the movies and it's the premiere of a good movie. Yeah. And, the, and everybody's like so yes. excited and jazzed for the movie. Yeah. And that's they, a really good analogy because that is how it felt. Everyone's just so excited. And the goal, I will say, is to get out of there as fast as you can if you're trying to leave right after. We got out of there pretty quick. Corey was the leader hauled us through the crowd and yeah. we made it out like on one of the first trams back to the parking lot. So I think we did pretty good. We huge, huge thank you to Cheryl and Allison for showing yes. us around the, the other parks at Disney that we hadn't seen. And getting to see our friends there was like such an unexpected surprise and so much fun. So we were really excited that the girls got to hang out with their friends while we were there. Okay, so one of our major missions was completed. We did find our friends. It has been so much fun to connect again. It's been a long time since these kids have been together and we were recreating some really hilarious photos um, from when they were little, which is a riot. Now we're back in St. Augustine um, yes. at my grandmother's house and we've talked about this before. We don't own a home base yet. It's on the list. It's something that we're looking for. Um, but people ask us all the time, how do you travel without a home base? And for us, it's that we have places like this. We call them kind of like our, our road traditions or yeah. our anchor points when we're coming back to an area. So for us, it's here in St. Augustine at my grandmother's. It's the and lake house in Maine. It's the ranch. It's the outpost. Yeah. All all those places that not only like the place feels like home, the people yes. feel like family there. Absolutely. So it's just places that are welcoming. And uh, so we get our little anchor points um, throughout the country. And that's kind of how we've been able to do it because right. I don't know if I could just simply just all over the place, campground to campground and not really and when we're in locations, we go explore, we do the really cool things, we go and do the, go find the, the things that are on our bucket list. Yep. And, and then, then we come back and we sit for a little bit for a and little we bit. rest. And it's a really important part for full-time travel. So no matter if it's a home base for you or if you find places like we have found, make sure you find places to rest because you need it, your kids need it. It's just something that you need to be able to keep track of because you can burn out really easily. So one thing that we use this particular home base for 
is kind of a reset. So it's, we use it as spring cleaning. So I love it. we're going to show you kind of our routine for how we put the R. It's only two weeks, but this is kind of what we do as an excuse to just do a reset on the RV. Mm -hmm. So one of the main things that we need to do before we're putting everything in storage is just going through everything. We do go through every single storage space. We go through every single cabinet. It's a time to clean things out and make sure that we haven't accumulated stuff that we don't need. And the most important thing when you're putting it in storage is make sure you're getting all food out. So what you guys saw me doing was emptying and then vacuuming out all the cabinets to make sure there's no crumbs. You don't want ants or insects or critters or anything getting into your RV when you're not in it and if you have food and sugar and all kinds of stuff lying around that's gonna happen usually what we would do is empty the refrigerator but we don't need to do that because we have solar on the roof solar that will just keep going and all of our food will be good because you don't want to replace condiments a lot of times we'll clean our windows out Yes. But we recently did our RV renovation tour video right. and we got a pretty deep cleaning in there. And what he's talking there. about is making sure that you're cleaning inside all of the ledges and stuff like that really, really well. That's the time that Move we use to Move couches back and make sure there's nothing growing on the walls or anything because moisture is an issue in, in RVs. Because a lot of these screens don't actually come out of these windows. So what I found is uh, that low pressure pressure washer just does a really good job of cleaning out screens. Yes, yeah, so. And he, getting the little grooves and stuff that. <laughs> the girls were sitting on the couch like doing school and all of a sudden he walked in with our Lippert pressure washer and just started like pressure washing inside the RV and the girls were like, what are you doing? Hey, and no actually, water got in here. It didn't, it and actually it was fantastic. So he new. did our whole front doorway, which looks awesome now. Um, he just sat here and sprayed through everything and it, it did such a good job because they're really hard to clean. Those are all the things that we do inside the RV. Same thing outside, we try to go through all of our storage units and like he said, you need to check things because stuff can be growing in places that you don't want it growing. Maybe you left a, a piece of fruit somewhere or whatever or Maybe wherever you- left you... like fish eggs in the back of your storage oh, yeah. unit yeah, from Alaska. That disgusting. was really gross. Lily thought that I said, save these but i meant save them so we go fishing the next morning using the fish she eggs she threw like salmon fish eggs that they took out of a salmon in a baggie and it took threw us it in our in our tackle box <laughs> it took us like two months to realize what I was, was like, that? that is a smell. What is that coming from? <laughs> Since leaving Alaska? Hey, Dad told me it would be a good idea to keep it as bait. No, I did not. Yes, he did. He did it as bait, but he didn't realize it had gotten put in the fishing gear. Bait for one day. No wonder it's been stinking. I just found it. Uh, that's what's left of the egg. <laughs> Daddy's got such a gag reflex. He oh, I found it. I, I dry heat for a second. Oh, God, it really stinks. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> <laughs> that's really gross. <laughs> So this right here is kind of the, the leftover food because we don't want to leave any food in here that attracts either ants or, you know, mice or anything. So, so what we'll do in here is we'll put little ant traps just to make sure our first line of defense, which is what we're going to do back at the campground that we're leaving it at. We put some treatments down to keep the rodents out and to keep the mice out. I don't even want to imagine what kind of damage a mouse could do inside an RV. They can do so much damage. So I you just, really have to protect your home and your RV from those types of things for sure. The only time we've ever had a mouse was in Alaska. Oh, uh, yes. And it was awful. You, you could, could just hear, hear it. You could hear it. Like we're in around. the silence of Homer, Alaska, like in the middle of oh nowhere and you gosh. could hear that thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's just eating everything. You're going to get him, honey. We're going to put this on that side. Look at all this. I don't even care if I waste it. Oh, he's a goner. Sorry, buddy. I'm so sorry. You cannot stay in our RV, though. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe it worked. I can't believe it worked. <laughs> we did get it. And, we did. Uh, that was the only time. Yep, that's, that's the, only the only time, time. we've had an issue. So there's a couple things that we do on the outside. For one, I'm going to put a little bit of bleach in our freshwater tank yep. and then kind of run it through all of our lines just so uh, just a slight bit of bleach stays in the lines and just, just nothing grows. That's just the idea is nothing grows. The black tank and the two gray tanks, we're going to kind of treat the same way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put some, you know, just some treatment in there and, and put about a gallon, two gallons of water. I don't know. My theory is that it does evaporate. So you definitely want to have, you don't want things drying. So right. 
I'll put a little bit more water than, than I think you need. And we've done this many, many times. Yes. So this method works really well. We've never had smells, like everything has been very fresh and very clean and whatever he does, it works. <laughs> yeah, you don't want smells. No. Where's one of those ant traps? Oh, down here. We just kind of put them in, you know, a couple different spots and then we just pick them up when we get back. Just, yep. just to make sure the treatment that we put on the outside doesn't work, exactly. you know, because I don't want, I don't want ants in my house. No, I really don't. Nope, they're no fun. Um, and especially clean out compartments that you do any barbecuing in. If you're putting barbecue equipment back in, make sure that you're cleaning that out because you don't. That is just going to attract animals, right, and insects. So exactly. look at ours real quick. So ours is actually emptied out because I'm in the process of redoing the whole outside kitchen. So there used to be a refrigerator here and there was kind of a pull out two burner thing that I never really used. So I'm going to put a blackstone on a slider, um, maybe have a, a side tray, but it's a blank slate right now. Let me show you what we do with the bleach. I got a third of a tank of water, so that's about 20 gallons in the tank right now. And I maybe have a half a cup of, of, uh, of bleach in this. So I'm just gonna siphon it into the tank. And this is the Nautilus system. I don't know what, what different brands have, but it's for dummies. You just you just follow the instructions. And I'm gonna pick this one right I would have no idea what to do if I didn't have all those instructions. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pick this one, sanitize, siphon the tank via the pump. So it uses the onboard pump to, uh, to do its work. and you can hear it kind of just sucking through. So this is just gonna empty into the tank. It's pumping into the tank right now really fast actually. And this is kind of what you would do if you were winterizing as well. I've never winterized it, but I've done this quite Same a few idea. times. Next what I do is I just go inside, I turn on all the faucets until I just smell just a little bit of bleach and then it's good to go. All right, so our kitchen sink is furthest away from the water tank, so I'll just start here. And when I smell from here, that's a good chance that it won't take very long for the other places. So I'm just simply smelling for just a hint of bleach, and I think we've done our job. Oh wow, already, sweet. And this at the same time fills the tanks to the level that I want them at. Um, so I can add, I'll do it right now. I've gone back and forth from several different types of treatments and they all seem to, you know, do a pretty good job. Uh, I was using Happy Camper for a while. I think that was really good, um, but I've just, when I needed it, I, they didn't have it, so I bought this. So this just says put two ounces in. I don't know what two ounces is, but that's got to be close. <laughs> and there we go. We got a little bit of a bleach flow. We got our tank treated. I'm not necessarily recommending this stuff. I just. That's what we've got. That's what I got right now. <laughs> and there you have it. A little more than two ounces in the black tank. What's wrong with uh, a little bit extra in the black tank? <laughs> So a lot of times when we come to a house or something and we just plug into a regular outlet, I'll just use this dongle right here that goes from 50 amp all the way down to 30 amp, but then I have another connection for a regular household plug. That saves me from getting a huge 50 amp cord out. That's a lot lighter than a 50 amp cord. Leaving tip when you're getting ready to move, touch every cabinet. About and most importantly, up. make sure you sweep under your slides. Yes, that too. And the most important one to touch with your hands. <laughs> your refrigerator. Is your refrigerator. Yeah. That's one you don't want leaking, but I don't leave the RV until I've touched every cabinet with my hands to make sure that they're done. And you would not believe how many times I've come in because somebody's come in and a cabinet didn't get closed or the refrigerator didn't get closed. So before you leave, touch every cabinet. probably asking yourself, why are we just putting our RV in storage for two weeks? 
people. It's because we want to spend more time with Jess's nanny and her HOA rules do not allow us to park the RV in her yard. And yeah, we could go get an RV park, but it's just to get projects done with her and help her out where we can and, and just spend the most time with her that we can, we're just gonna throw it in storage. And like I said, it gives us this great excuse to just do a reset. Um, so obviously that was a little oversimplified, basically preventative maintenance that you can get done and every RV is gonna be different. You're gonna add or subtract things, uh, depending on if you have a class A, C, B, yeah. whatever. Fifth All wheel. Of the above. I mean, if you maybe you would take this time to do an oil change if you were had a class A or yep. or whatever. A lot of times, what I'll do, I just did it because I'll lube up all the seals and stuff, right. um, the gaskets and uh, the slides, everything. Just I'll do that at this point as well. So yes, that was oversimplified, but basically we just want to prevent anything catastrophic. Catastrophic meaning mold is growing, mildew is growing, right? Ants are ants are infesting or mice, mice rats, chewing stuff. Yeah, exactly. So the whole goal is preventative maintenance and just a little bit of a reset, getting rid of what we don't need. We, we always, always find, find things to get rid of. Always, we have like growing teenage girls. Like they're always outgrowing clothes or changing things, or we finished a school book and we don't need to carry it anymore. So it's just always such an awesome reminder to just clear things out and make sure that if there's something in the RV that you're not using or if it doesn't have a place, get rid of it or find a place for it. That's one of the rules that we had in our house. It's one of the rules that we have in the RV. Yep. If it doesn't have a place to go, then it doesn't belong. In the house. Or if you just don't use it, don't have it. That's right. Um, and we, we actually use this as a little experiment. We use it as a test to see if the girls are still into this. And yeah. Each and every, because they have their own room at Nanny's house. They do, that, that they, they decorate themselves. It's their room. Yep. Each and every time, it doesn't matter how long we're here for, the girls are excited to get back on the road. That's right. Um, I don't know, that's just what we're doing right now. Uh, as soon as that changes, we'll, we'll switch it up. But for right now, it's we're, working. we're travelers. <laughs> Should I going forward more? Uh, you can make it just fine right now. You're doing great. Keep going. You got tons of room. Tons of room. Keep coming. Keep coming. It's really uh, wet on this right side, so as close as we can get to over towards the motorhome while still being able to open the slide, the better. There's a big drop off on this other side that gets really wet. There you go. You want to back it in straight from there, baby. That's perfect. Keep coming. Yep. Keep coming. Keep coming. No closer. Either pull forward or bring that back end over, back over to passenger side. Okay. Good job. So if you are ever in need of putting your RV in storage for a period of time, there's obviously a bunch of different places where you can store boats and RVs and all that kind of stuff, but don't discount calling local RV mm -hmm. campgrounds because a lot of them will have storage and we really feel comfortable leaving our RV with like other RVers around. So yeah, it just feels safe. It seems better. <laughs> yeah. so. so that's what we did this time. There's a local campground that has some RV storage and that's where we're going to park the rig for a couple weeks. Okay. So obviously you're going to want to check on everything when you arrive at your storage place. I'm going to close the blinds. I'm going to make sure everything's off there. Jess is actually going to refill some of our ant traps just in case. So if you have old ant traps, you can actually refill them to make sure that they're getting the good stuff and they're taking it back. And they're getting never the good coming. stuff. They're never exactly. coming back. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want to use like raid or something and kill it because that just, that with some ants just blocks them off and they start a whole new pod someplace else. So don't just kill them. No, nope. you want them to take um, it back to their home. If this wasn't going to stay on the whole time, we would have it all cleaned out and yes. then we would have it propped open so air can get into it. Uh, but since it's just going to stay on, we're just going to leave it like I'm it is. Leave it. Uh, we do need to defrost it, but we'll do that when we get back. So get back, which again, we recommend doing at least twice a year for your freezer just to like clear all that out because you don't want anything infringing on your freezer space in an RV. No, you don't. <laughs> out here if it was going to be long-term storage and you knew it was in a really sunny place it was going to be for a while you might want to think about waxing because the sun can really do some damage and there's also the option of putting covers on uh, i don't recommend covers unless you're super clean to start with and that your cover is actually clean because if stuff is in between your RV and that cover and the wind hits it it's going to just slowly mar and mess up your paint job so 
just make sure if you're using a cover, everything is clean beforehand. Um, we're only here a couple weeks, so I'm not gonna worry about putting any kind of um, wheel covers on like this guy does. I got protected on anyway, so we're not here that long, so that's not gonna happen. There's usually gonna be a, a disconnect for your battery. That's where the stock location is. That's not actually where ours is, but we're not turning it off anyways. And then you're gonna wanna turn your propane off at the nozzles. And then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna just place some of those motion lights just because light is always gonna be the best security. So I think I'm just gonna put one up, up front and then one in the back. All right, I'm just using these Velcro command strips so I can just take it back off later. I'm just gonna put one in the back now uh, and then I'm gonna put the, the rodent repellent and all the other stuff down. All right. Excellent. Let's take care of those mice. All right. Okay, so these are the two things I'm gonna use. Diatomaceous earth, I might've said that wrong. That's for the ants and, you know, creepy crawlies. And this is for rodents. So basically both of these things, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spread around anywhere where the RV touched the ground. So anything coming up will be like, I don't wanna go there because I don't like that crap. <laughs> and both of these things are pet safe. So you can't harm anything else that you're not intending to harm. If we were gonna use this and we were at an RV park and this was down, I would put it around here. If our, if our uh, leveling blocks were down, I would put it right down there. But right now, all we're gonna have to worry about is the front tongue jack and the tires. So we're just gonna put it around the whole thing and we are done. We are done. We have to say bye to this thing. That's the worst. That is the worst. All right, I'm gonna just do this first, uh, the diatomaceous earth. I wonder if I'm saying that right. <laughs> I don't know, but it sounds good. That sounds good. It looks official, right? Look at that. You shall not pass. <laughs> you shall not pass. <laughs> I feel like you did a little bit better with like your lines on that one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't think it matters. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides, but this stuff I'm gonna be a little bit more thorough on. I'm actually gonna put it on this right here because they could jump up and climb up here. So I'm just gonna spray this everywhere. I'm gonna spray it up in the wheel wells. Anywhere where they're gonna climb up into is where I wanna spray. Smells like cinnamon. It really does smell like cinnamon. Okay. We're doing so good. Oh. Tongue Jack, there's a pole there. Jeez. <laughs> like this, this was hanging down, so I'm gonna put this up here so they can't climb up it. And this is the same stuff I've used for the past four years and we've never had a problem and it doesn't discolor anything, so. Yeah. Well done. Oh, come on, how about those lines? I love it. I ah. love it. So last obvious bit of advice is lock all your storage compartments. Lock your doors, make sure it's in a good spot to begin with. Know the area you're putting your RV in, check on it often, have somebody else check on it, have lights going, have it connected to the internet and have video going for motion. The only time I hear of people getting broken into for their RVs is when it's in prolonged storage and someone's had a time to go buy it and go buy it and go buy it and keep being like, okay, this isn't going anywhere. Nobody's checking on this, I'm, I'm going in. And that's when things get stolen and that's obviously that's, there's exceptions to that. But sure. I'll make sure there's nothing obvious out. <laughs> Well, I'm glad it happened now. I guess yeah. I need two of those. Yes. All right, good. <laughs> but all those things will help 
make sure somebody doesn't come in here. Yes, and obviously don't have things out that attract attention. Right. Uh, keep your windows closed so nobody can peer into your windows and see something in there. Yeah. So all just normal things. Same thing you should do with your truck, wherever you're parked. Keep things hidden. Put your truck someplace where... It's in good light. It's in good light. Just yeah. common sense. Common sense stuff. Uh, but we're going to lock this thing up and uh, reattach this. Because <laughs> that was pathetic. That lasted like five minutes. <laughs> part yeah we don't like saying goodbye to our house I don't I don't like saying goodbye to my bed oh I know but for the reasons we listed below that's why we're putting it in storage for just a little while and then we'll be back on the road mm -hmm. so let us know in comments if you have ever left your RV in storage and if so what are your steps in prepping it and preparing it to leave it somewhere yes for your specific are. rig or, or or just to help someone down in the comments as to maybe something that I forgot that, yeah, that, definitely. that you think is critical storage locked and that is like tripled up light triple stuck that is not coming off now <laughs> pump is off 100% that's what we like to see, right? Solar. Come on. <laughs> it only took us how long? <laughs> stay on. You. Yeah. You. And you, line of Damascus Earth. <laughs> Damascus Earth. Damascus. <laughs> Whatever you are. Whatever. Keep everything else out. Oh.